Okay, I've just got back from uh, riding the new BSA Gold Star down here at Cooper in Northampton. Quick review, uh, we're riding it back to back with an Interceptor 650 Twin, so it was a great opportunity to see what the bike is like in comparison to its main competitor. I think first and foremost, the engine, there is a different characteristic. The 650 in the, the single in this BSA feels a little bit peppier. It feels like at 3000, it really picks up and goes. It feels not as linear power delivery as the Interceptor more as a bit of a peak and then it plateaus out. I think what that means in day-to-day -day riding is you get a bit more thrill from the engine than you do in the Interceptor. Both equally as swift, I think neck to neck, neck and neck there's no difference in, in the actual performance, just that there's a bit more peppiness and squirt on this which I think will make it more exciting for those fast flowing A and B road riding. Which brings on to the suspension. I think this is a little bit more supple and better damped than the Interceptor. Over those choppy B roads where you've got corners that are ch chop into them, this handles and sits a little bit more sure-footed and more agile and allows you to push on and hustle the bike a little bit more than the Interceptor. So power and handling actually, I would say, just nudges ahead on the BSA over the Interceptor. Brakes are also a little bit better, you've got the Brembos on these rather than the Bybri uh, on the Interceptor. So that's almost 3-0 to the BSA. Riding position is good, feels comfortable. Controls are, I won't say they feel quality feeling the controls, but everything works as, as it does. You've got a backward swinging uh, rev counter and speeder, which is a bit weird, takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, the downside of the BSA, which I find, I think, the detail is not as nice as on the Interceptor, the build quality doesn't feel as, as, as quality and built to last as it does on the Royal Enfield. I think this painted finish here is going to tarnish. I think there's a, just a few exposed points and a bit of, like the mounting point of this US, USB charger up here. Also the horn down on the left hand side. It's just not as neat and as tidy and as well thought through as on the Interceptor. So it makes it very difficult if you're coming into this which do I buy, the BSA or the Interceptor. From a riding point of, point of view, from a two hour squirt on a Sunday, I'd probably choose this. Is it going to be as good in the long term as an ownership experience and on the longer rides as the Interceptor? I'm not convinced by that. I think the early adopters who buy this will be able to tell us that in over the coming months. But for anybody now trying to make a decision between the BSA and the Interceptor, I don't think there's a right and I don't think there's a wrong. What they both are is very good bikes coming in at very good price points which you ultimately end up with, you're probably going to have niggling regrets that you didn't buy the other, but that's life. I think fundamentally, two good bikes, take them both for a ride and see, it's that, it, I think it's the engine and the delivery of the power that's going to make the distinction between you, whether you like BSA or Interceptor. But fundamentally, both very good bikes, good to ride, enjoyable, starts at six and a half, Interceptor starts at 6,200. 6,000 mile service intervals on this, so that's the main thing that trumps it over the Royal Enfield. See how they sell.